Hello everybody, how are you? Good morning, good morning. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just double check so I don't give you bad information. Bad information. Uh, yeah, of course, Wednesday, September 9th. Another beautiful morning in the fall in the south side of Pittsburgh, we're actually uh, southeast of Forest Hills. I'm not really sure what this community is called. I guess I could put some effort forward and maybe look. Uh, well, this looks like it's maybe North Versailles. <laughs> it's near the Walmart. How does that? <laughs> I've been living down there by the Walmart. Where are you? Where are you staying? Where are you staying? Uh, guys, this video is going to be another Pittsburgh community spotlight. This time on Wilmerding. Now, we, this technically might be Wilmerding. I am not one hundred percent sure, but I know I was over at the Burger King having breakfast, talking to my agent on the phone, and the lady behind the counter uh, heard me. She said, "You know, you should do one of your videos about Wilmerding." And even though she worked at Burger King, she had on a Pittsburgh Pirates championship uh, toque or stocking cap, as we say in the United States. And she was wearing a sweater that said Wilberding High School Band, trumpet section 89 to 92. So I'm assuming she's local and she told me all about Wilmerding. I'm going to share with you what she told me. Now, this is an interesting community because it's so family oriented. And in fact, it was started by the Wilmerding family in 1799, uh, right around the time that a lot of the communities in uh, the near the near side, in other words, just over the river from Pittsburgh, had already been, had already been settled. <laughs> My tech just makes these noises. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, as the city grew, of course, the communities just over the river were the first to be settled with, uh, with uh, you know, expansion. But Wilberding lagged a little. And so by 1799, uh, a lot of the city and the near, near south side suburbs have already begun to grow. But here it was, Wilmerding bringing it up, coming on strong in the late uh, 1700s. And they were finally founded in 1805, uh, although originally settled in like 1775. It took a little bit of a headwind. But the thing is, they didn't really care too much about being the uh, leading suburb. They didn't want to be as well known as Mount Lebanon or fame was not their thing. Because the Wilberding family is are the original people that settled here, and that was their that word family is is key, because they wanted Wilberding to be a family focused community, and I guess you could say that's what it is today, because the Wilberding High School football games are well attended, the uh, parks have plenty of softball diamonds and uh, you know horseshoe pits and. You can play all kinds of games, and there's monkey bars, and it's a family-oriented community. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, single, single night spots, although there's a couple, but there's not a lot of hot spots for singles to uh, go dancing to the latest, uh, you know, hits, the latest, uh, you know, uh, Kanye West concoction, or Lil Tecca, if that may, if makes me more current. So, <laughs> get three years at the top. That's what Cube said. That's what Cube said. You get three years at the top of the rap game. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Although Rihanna has been <laughs> rolling pretty good for a long time. <laughs> Maybe we're with women, it's longer, right? How long will, how long will Cardi go? How long did uh, Nikki go? Nikki was the queen for a long time. Rihanna was kind of in her own space, but Nikki was pretty much the rap queen for what long time? She was on everything, and then she started uh, started doing videos with six six nine and stuff. Takashi, oh my gosh, what happened? All right, we're getting off track. So, uh, so what made Wilberding unique back in those days was that family orientation. In fact, it's cooked right into the Wilberding uh, 
mission statement that the community will be focused on the family and uh, provide those facilities and resources for families to grow, therefore making a strong community, a strong Pittsburgh, a strong Pennsylvania, and, of course, United States of America. And, and that's really the way to do it. It starts at the grassroots, people sticking together, families sticking together. Now, what happens, well, though, when things go a little haywire? I mean, I come from a very big family, and things went haywire on an hourly basis. <laughs> Our parents uh, weren't so much uh, trying to teach us to grow and learn, they were trying to keep us alive. That was pretty much... <laughs> uh, I have some complaints about how I was brought up. Uh, uh, excuse me, are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. Okay, M mission accomplished. Next. <laughs> Take your complaints and your highfalutin parental strategies and flush them. Our mission was, one, keep you alive, and two, make sure you didn't die. <laughs> but anyway, back to Wilbur Ding. See, the, the, the key to these videos, I, as you may have determined by now, is they really, it's all about the uh, <laughs> side roads that I take. Uh, back to Wimberding. So what do you do when uh, the family goes a little haywire, there's some arguments, there's some political struggles, and that's exactly what happened to the Wilberding uh, family way back in the day. So let's, let's, let's break it down. So Wilberding came, or, the old man Wilberding came over, to, over here in 1770, and uh, there were no kids. It was just him and his wife, Martha, Martha Wilberding and old man Wilberding. And they settled in this area and they said, we're going to make this the family center of the United States. And so they proceeded to have their own family. And the guy had all 40, I don't know, 100,000 acres in this area. He, he uh, came into some money in England and came to America to not to start a cult so much or like a like a commune or a, uh, you know, nothing like that. But he wanted to start a big family, and then hopefully that those big, you know, it would grow from there. He would create his own dynasty. And that's pretty bold thinking for the 1700s. Uh, I'm going to create a dynasty, because what was the age, what, was the age uh, what do they call it, life expect, expectancy at, at that time? It's kind of amazing. And maybe that was part of it, too, was that we have to have uh, babies and, um, you know, get things going, because we may not live that long. Uh, that's the problem with today. Honestly, we live too long because <laughs> really nature, I mean, really your whole mission is to duplicate yourself, is to have offspring. That's nature's way, right? That's the DNA. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get that message. I thought it was to play golf and I kind of forgot to get married. I had it on my list. I had it on my, I had a to-do list on my, uh, Google thing, my Google calendar to, it has a to-do section. And I put on there, get married, have kids. And I had it on there. But I kept playing golf for 10 years. And then by that time, uh, I was old and fat and nobody would date me. And that's kind of where we are now. Um, but anyway, so as the Wilberding family grew and they were really doing what he, old man Wilberding wanted. They had a loving, growing family. It's kind of like Walton's Mountain, but it was like Wilberding's Holler down here. And... Uh, they, they started to get press coverage uh, throughout the frontier uh, about the stability of the family and a lot of the fun things. So they, they had all kinds guys as, as a family, as a giant family. So they had, within a very short time, they had a 50 to 100 family members, okay? And, you know, of course, they married outside. They weren't, it wasn't one of those deals. It wasn't, you know, marrying your cousin thing. So, so bringing in uh, people they met from different uh, counties around here, and some some of them even traveled up so far as uh, you know, uh, Homestead to find a wife, to find a husband. And uh, you know, if you've ever been to Homestead, there's some fine uh, potential wives and husbands up there. To this day, you can walk down the street in Homestead and look around, and you go, th th "This these people are fine husbands or wives to be. They really are. You can tell." And uh, so, so they the family was growing, and guys, they weren't kidding around. They had everything. They had softball leagues, they had touch football leagues, 
they had a weekly, uh, not a weekly, they had a, <laughs> yeah, every week, uh, a summer festival, a three-day summer festival with music, like an early version of today's EDM festivals, but with uh, banjo music. It was, they'd have three days summer folk festivals down here in these hills, guys. This is in 1810, 1820, right? Okay, as the family grew. They had uh, uh, river races, riverboat races, okay, along the Mangahila. They had um, dam building contests. Yeah, it was crazy. They, they had, it was like a family slash sports league slash festival promoter is what they had going. So it was almost like a small time town, but they were all, all related. So when things get, when haywire, you know, when there's an argument and people get, you know, families get feisty. I mean, sometimes uh, people are, are more kind to people they don't know than to their own blood. You know what I mean? Because they, they, I don't know if it's a natural knowledge that they, they feel like, well, where are they going to go? That's my, that's my kin. You know, I can be mean to them. Uh, or I don't know what it is, but there's just some sort of um, unwritten rule that you can be meaner to your kin than to the uh, stranger uh, in the grocery store <laughs> that you'll never see again. So that's exactly what happened. As the family grew, uh, there was some fights, there were some arguments. You know, it's just natural. <coughs> Excuse me. And so old man, uh, old man Wilmerding, he said, all right, we got to set up a family court. And that actually began, just as a quick sidebar, that actually was the model for the first city courts in the area because there wasn't any sheriff. There wasn't any law. It wasn't a law of the land. You know, they had like three laws. Be a faster draw. Uh, don't cheat at cards and uh, check yourself, you know, for ticks. That, that's how, that's what it was on the frontier. Check yourself for ticks, have a faster draw than the other fella or other girl, other lady, and uh, don't cheat at cards. Those are pretty much the, th the three uh, directives of the frontier. So he set up a family court. Now, one particular situation arose that kind of exemplifies the challenge of negotiating arguments in the frontier, especially among family. So there was one uncle who he decided, hey, I am going to build the biggest house in the, uh, the, in the property. And the property, again, was 100,000 acres. It wasn't, it wasn't like they were right next to each other. But he proceeded to draw resources from other family members in order to build this humongous house. Now, this started to draw the ire of some of the other uh, men that had their own clan and their own property because he was borrowing labor, basically. In a sense, he was flexing on the other brothers and sisters and using their kids as labor. So th this came up in front of old man Wilberding, and they said, look, you know, Jeb over here is building this huge house. First of all, they don't need 5,000 square feet. It's 1820. I mean, what, what are you going to do with a 5,000 square foot house? You going to hunt deer inside your house? Oh, well, maybe he did. Uh, but secondly, they complained that he's using our kids as labor and we tell our kids don't go over there, but uh, to help lift logs and put, put roofing in place. But the kids say, hey, man, the guy's got, uh, sh you know, sweet, salty bison meat. The he uh, kill, kills every morning, so it's fresh. And they roast it on the open fire and has bison meat and noodles for breakfast every day. So it was the scrambled eggs. So, you know, what can we do? And uh, so anyway, old man Wilberding had to uh, lay down the law. So he, he just said, look, you can have this huge house. You can't use the free labor anymore. you got to pay the kids and you got to get permission from their parents. But not only that, guess what? We're going to tax you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? What? The guy said, nah, this is the frontier. There ain't no taxes out here. And old man Wilberding said, there is now, buddy. There is now. 
So uh, every uh, couple of weeks, the uh, guy had to, you know, walk a cow down to one of the other family members as the tax and give it to him. And, you know, so they settled it all out. But guys, it wasn't easy. And Wilmer Ding really was the model for a lot of the uh, gover governance in this area. And remember, this is one of the first settlements in the entire country. This was the Wild West. I mean, we're only a couple hours, how many, three hours from Philadelphia or however far it is. So, you know, it's not that, not that far, but in 1770, this was the wide open frontier. This was uh, like, you know, Laramie, Wyoming. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised. There was probably some uh, gun draws uh, in the middle of Pittsburgh. Right in the middle of uh, Forbes Avenue or the Boulevard of the Allies, there probably was some gunfights, some gun, okay, corral style. Uh, meet you outside, quickest draw wins. I'll bet you that happened. Now, the problem was in 1790, the guns you had to, you know, it was a flintlock type deal. You had to load the thing, get the flint right. So the, <laughs> so the gunfights at high noon were kind of slow because they'd go draw. And they'd pull the pistol and load the pistol and get the flintlock and get the... <laughs> like 10 minutes later, somebody would fire and they'd miss. Bam! And the guy would... The other guy would touch his chest. Like, did I get hit? Is there any holes? There'd be no holes. And he... he <laughs> and he's, he's already almost done loading. And then he'd fire. Bang! And then he'd miss. You know, it was a 45-minute shootout. So... <laughs> Uh, so, you know, the Wilmerding family was really the model for a lot of the governance in this area and, and things that still remain today and have spread throughout the United States. So here's to the Wilmerding, the Wilmerdings and the town of Wilmerding, the township or borough, whatever it is, or community. Uh, thanks for your contribution to both family life and... The courts and govern governance that is common throughout the United States. And that's another Pittsburgh uh, Community Spotlight and a Joe Ditzel parody video. Come back for more, guys. There's so much more, and uh, i got to defog my windows.